from Oracle to Exasol. How can you do a migration? That is what this clip is about. I'm Uwe Hesse. I work for Exasol as a technical evangelist. I'm blogging and I have a Twitter handle as well. Also, I am an Oracle certified master and an Oracle certified expert for real application clusters and exadata. So I might know what I'm talking about in regard of Oracle. On the Exasol side, I am an Exasol certified developer, an Exasol certified administrator and performance expert. So does that look like your status quo? I mean, you have several data sources that you load data from into your staging area that may be an Oracle database. And there you clean and transform data and put it into the data warehouse data model. And then you load it from staging to your Oracle data warehouse. And from there you have BI front ends connected like MicroStrategy or Tableau or Looker or whatever. And um, well, that is the present situation, right? Now, what's the problem with that status quo? Well, usually you have two pain points here. One pain point is the high cost in terms of licensing and maintenance effort for your staging and legacy Oracle data warehouse. And secondly, often your BI users complain about too slow performance. So what can we do about these two pain points? Well, in the first step, you add Exasol here as a high performance sidecar. So you connect an Exasol database to your Oracle data warehouse and you just ship the cleaned and transformed data from there to the Exasol database. That is usually easy to do. We will see in a moment how to do that. And that resolves the performance problem. Yeah, now your BI users are happy because everything is much faster than before. In a second and more ambitious step, you could replace your Oracle databases altogether with an Exasol database. So you may do the staging and the transformation in an Exasol database. And that comes with less maintenance and less license cost, therefore. And your BI users are still happy because the Exasol database is faster than the legacy data warehouse that you had before. Now, how to do the first step? Well, you connect your Oracle data warehouse to Exasol. Then you load the tables from the data warehouse, typically in a dedicated schema, into an Exasol database. And then you may have some critical statements, typically those who experience bad performance at the moment, and you test them against Exasol. And then you see they are still running, but faster. Then you can continue to connect your BI front ends to Exasol instead of Oracle. On the left side of this picture here, you see Exa operation. That is Exasol's administration tool. And you use it to upload an Oracle Instant Client. Afterwards, you can create a connection from your Exasol database to the Oracle database where your data warehouse is on. Now, let's see that in action. This is my database, my Exasol database. I click on the software branch and there I have the option to upload the Oracle Instant Client that I downloaded from Oracle before. 
I click on open there and then submit. And that's already it. Now the instant client is uploaded and available for the XSO database. Next, I'm using DB Visualizer to connect to my XSO database. I open another SQL commander and do the create connection there. And then I test this new connection here with a select sysdate from dual that is done on the Oracle database site and it works. After having created the connection from XSOL to Oracle, the next step is to actually load the data warehouse tables into the XSOL database. Now for that purpose we have a standard script in our public GitHub repository that helps you with that step. Yeah, it's called Oracle to XSOL dot SQL. Again, let's see that in action. That's our public GitHub repository. I scroll down to the script Oracle to XSO dot SQL, click on it. And then I will just mark the part that I want to copy. Essentially the whole script without the comments and execute script command at the end. Yeah, I highlight that, copy it, and then I change to DB Visualizer and paste it there, and then review it. Yeah, it creates a schema and the script inside of that schema. I execute the whole buffer with all commands there, and that was it. Now the script has been created. I don't need that command anymore. I close it and create a new one to have it clean. And there I execute the script that I've just created. Now this analyzes all the tables in the SH schema and generates create table commands for XSOL and import commands for XSOL. So executing that script did generate this output that I can now copy and execute again in another window. So I open another SQL commander again, paste the generated output from the script execution, and you see it contains create schema and create or replace table commands, followed by import commands into these tables from the Oracle database. Again, I execute the whole buffer with all the commands there. And now, depending on the data volume that is contained in the tables, it takes a while to import them all, especially the large ones. But the manual effort is quite limited. The next thing to do would be testing critical SQL statements that were slow, for example, in Oracle, on XSL. For example, let's say that here is a critical statement. You see it is a join between a large fact table called sales and three dimension tables, 
times customers and channels. And it has a couple of where conditions and group by and order by clauses. And yeah, let's see how that looks live. So that is the critical statement now first running against the Oracle database. It's actually a nice thing about DB Visualizer. I can use it to work with Oracle as well as with XSO. Yeah, and it produces the desired output in Oracle. But let's say we are not satisfied with the runtime duration here. Now, the same statement on XSO, does it work? Yes. It's a bit slower though. Why is that? Well, as you will see later, on the first run, it did create all the required indexes, which were already present on the Oracle side. So that was not a fair comparison. The table has now the same size, of course, on both databases in terms of row count. We see that here in Oracle and the data size in Oracle is 560 megabyte. Now let's compare that on the Exasol site. The row count is the same. The table is much smaller though in Exasol. That is because we will always and automatically compress. Now let's compare runtimes again. That was lightning fast in Exasol now because query cache has been used. That's not fair. So I switch it off. And now we compare runtimes on both databases, Exasol and Oracle. And as you see, without anything in terms of tuning, I just imported the tables and now I run the same SQL statements in both databases and Excel is faster already. I don't need to do anything about it. No tuning or whatsoever. So it's out of the box faster than Oracle was before. Now, what if the table grows? The large fact table doubles its size now, first in Oracle, and then in Exasol. But let's first see how that looks in Oracle. I did speed up this clip for the insert because otherwise it would just be too boring to watch that for six minutes, the insert ongoing on the Oracle database, I mean. You see, finally it succeeds. And now I do the same with Exasol. You know, the table size did double. Now it's roughly one gig in Oracle. And now I do the same in Exasol. Here, I don't have to speed up the clip because the insert is just quite fast in Exasol compared to the insert in Oracle. Now, why is that? Well, 
One reason here why that is so much slower in Oracle is because there are much more indexes to maintain. When I query DBA indexes in, in Oracle, we see there are quite some indexes in the SH schema. And indexes also need to be maintained upon insert, which slows down the insert. On Exasol, on the other hand, I didn't import any indexes. This three indexes got generated automatically. Then you can go on to connect your BI front ends to Exasol now. You see a list here from our online documentation. That list is ever expanding. So chances are that your favorite BI tool connects with Exasol also without any problems. And you see some popular tools that are on the list like Tableau, MicroStrategy, Power BI. So yeah, shouldn't be an issue here. Now, how to do the more ambitious step two, that is replacing your staging and legacy data warehouse altogether with Exasol. In, in our case, replacing Oracle altogether with Exasol. Well, in that case, you would need to connect your data sources to Exasol, not anymore to the staging database. And we recommend that you create a dedicated staging schema then in the Exasol database and do your data cleaning and transformation there. Chances are that you do not need all the transformations that you did previously if you're using Exasol. For example, we don't need heavy denormalization to deliver a good performance. So you may get rid of a couple of transformations that we just don't need for performance. Um, the next line is in red because that could be some effort. If you have existing transformation procedures written in PL SQL, that needs to be converted and reviewed because we do not support PL SQL as XSL. So you need to do something else instead of PL SQL here. For example, create a Lua script or go with pure SQL instead of the stored procedure. We will see an example soon. And then finally, after you did set up your staging schema and put the transformations and data cleaning there, you're then ready to populate your data warehouse schema from the staging schema and continue to use your BI front and then connect it to Exasol. So this here is an example for a transformation that you may be doing at the moment with the Oracle database. You have a source table that is the upper table here on the slide, which has a bit a strange format. As you see here, you have one column for every day of the week there. And you have a weekly start date. And we want to have this table transformed as shown below so that you have one row for every day of the week, not in a columnar format as above. Now that's the goal. So we want to transform that table into the below format. And presently, this is done by PL SQL with code like this here. So what you see here is a 
typical cursor for loop gear that does the transformation in PL SQL. I don't say that this is the only way to do it or the most optimal PL SQL code to do it. It is just an example. And now how to translate that in the Exasol world, right? I mean, one option would be this here. I could replace the existing PL SQL stored procedure with a Lua stored script like this here. It does a similar thing as the PL SQL procedure did before. It has the same outcome, in other words. But as you see, it's obviously a totally different syntax. We will see that as a live example in a moment. And in both cases, this one insert is a better solution because it just performs better than both PL SQL and also Lua. Let's see that in action now. First, I am on the Oracle database. I set my schema to SH and then create the sales input table first and then I insert three rows into the sales input table. And we look at the strangely formatted input table now. We see one column for each day of the week. Now I create the sales table. The drop takes a while because the sales table was one gig in size before. And then I create the table sales anew with the desired target format. And that is my existing PL SQL procedure that does the transformation in Oracle. And no problem with three rows, it converts them into 21 rows in the target table. And nicely one row for every date. So three input rows lead to 21 output rows in the target table. Now what if the source is larger? With this for loop, I increased the input table size to 768 rows. Now I empty the target table and then I call the procedure again and we see now it is a bit slower because we have more input rows and the outcome is then we got 5,376 output rows from the input table. Now I change to the Exasol database and I set up the same sales input table there. With the same rows. So it looks exactly the same as before in the Oracle database. And then I create the target table, also in Exasol. And this is my Lua script that does the transformation now in Exasol. The logic is similar, but the syntax is different. Then I execute that script and it converts the three input rows into 21 output rows also here.
Now, I increase the sales input table in the same way as I did before in Oracle. What we see here is that the Lua script has a slower runtime than the PL SQL script did have before. It's significantly slower in this case. But in the end, it does the same conversion. Yeah, I got 5,376 output rows here as well. Now, in both databases, instead of doing the stored procedures conversion that I did before, an other and better way to do that is to use an insert statement instead. So I keep the existing larger sales input table here and I now run the one insert command that does the conversion. And we see it is lightning fast. First in Oracle, does the same as the PL SQL conversion did before. And then I change to Accessor, open the schema there, truncate the sales table there as well. I keep the large sales input table as before, and now I do the insert there. And it is also lightning fast. Thank you for your attention. I hope you found this clip about Oracle to Exasol migration helpful. If you have any questions or comments about it, feel free to reach out. There you see my email address. It's uve.hesse.exasol.com.